This is the Greater Mississippi River Basin, the most extensive inland transportation network on the planet. It is unique in having numerous rivers originating from lowlands, allowing the waterways to flow effortlessly over great distances, supplying water to agricultural fields and factories and flowing to the sea. This river system was instrumental in the U.S. emerging as a continental power. It supports more than a million square miles of fertile agricultural land and supplies drinking water to over 20 million people. But lately, we've been hearing that the water level of the Mississippi River is at an all-time low. One month, we hear about the river drying up, and the next month it's flooding again. The real issue is that in people's attempt to control this powerful river, it has been turned from a dynamic natural system into an over-engineered canal, and now, that system is falling apart. Today, let's explore why the Mississippi River is dying and why it might be too late to save this river. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Mississippi River Basin became part of the U.S. through the Louisiana Purchase. The French had already been constructing dams and levees for over a century, and the U.S. chose to continue this practice. In the early years, the primary goal was to enhance navigation of the river system and boost commerce. However, the river quickly proved to be both a boon and a bane. The Mississippi starts from a small glacial lake in northern Minnesota and flows all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Along its route, thousands of lakes, creeks, and streams feed into the river. This vast network makes the Mississippi's water levels highly sensitive to weather patterns across the continent. For instance, heavy rainfall in the upper Ohio Basin can cause high water levels in the Delta, while a drought in the lower Mississippi Valley can lower them. The floods of the 19th century highlighted this susceptibility, but the true turning point came in 1927. The previous summer was exceptionally wet, with continuous rainfall for months. In some regions, water levels rose dramatically by 56 feet. Soon after, levees along the Mississippi began to fail in 145 locations. Over 27,000 square miles of land were submerged across 10 states, with Arkansas suffering the most. The flood persisted for several months, inundating some areas with up to 30 feet of water. It became the most destructive flood in the nation's history. This event made it clear that such floods were not anomalies. The geography of the Mississippi expects the river to occasionally spread across its floodplains. But this natural behavior is detrimental to businesses and disastrous for the numerous communities along the riverbanks. The damages from this flood amounted to a third of that year's entire Federal Reserve budget. It became evident that future prevention was necessary. Consequently, the catastrophic flood of 1927 prompted the United States government to initiate its first comprehensive plan to develop the river's basin. The Mississippi River and Tributaries Project began, which is now considered one of the most successful civil works initiatives ever undertaken by Congress. They constructed the world's longest system of levees and floodways. The levees built by the French were only three feet high, but by the 1980s, the United States had increased their average height to 24 feet. In the upper Mississippi, a series of locks and dams were constructed to ensure a depth of 9 feet for commercial barges. In the lower Mississippi, the river is naturally much deeper, accommodating cargo ships and even cruise ships. Between 1927 and 2015, nearly $14.8 billion was invested in this project yielding an estimated $639 billion in returns. Despite several major floods, this system of levees has proven to be remarkably durable. Flooding frequency has decreased, and transportation has become much more efficient. However, this success comes with a downside. For thousands of years, the Mississippi River served as a fertile habitat for millions of birds and fish. Yet, in just a few decades of damming and channeling, it has been transformed into a massive barge canal, now relatively devoid of life. The natural floodplain ecosystems have been drained and cut off from the river. 
A fact that you may not know and will astound you is that the river's basin accounts for an impressive 92% of all agricultural exports in the United States. This region leads in the production of corn, grain, and soy, with most of these goods being shipped via the river. The river system was crucial to the nation's growth during the Industrial Revolution, and it remains vital today. This river system functions as a superhighway, offering a much cheaper alternative to land transport. All the effort humans have invested in controlling the river's flow is undoubtedly an engineering marvel and an economic triumph. However, it has also had negative environmental impacts and continues to present significant challenges. A river is the sum of everything it gathers along its course. The Greater Mississippi River Basin, one of the world's most productive farmlands, exemplifies this. Farmers in the region use chemical fertilizers containing nitrogen and phosphorus, which are essential for growing soybeans and corn. However, these nutrients often unintentionally wash into the river, becoming pollutants. Approximately 40% of the Mississippi watershed is now polluted, making swimming and fishing inadvisable. These pollutants eventually flow into the Gulf of Mexico, leading to a rapid overgrowth of algae. When the algae die and decompose, the process consumes oxygen, creating a zone about the size of Connecticut that is entirely devoid of oxygen, a dead zone. This part of the ocean is so low in oxygen that no wildlife can survive. It is estimated that this dead zone costs the U.S. seafood and tourism industries about $82 million per year. Despite all efforts, the river could not be fully controlled. In the summer of 2023, a substantial snowpack in northern Minnesota and Wisconsin melted rapidly, causing water levels to surge and flooding in several communities in Iowa and Illinois. Just a few months later, the situation reversed. Louisiana and Mississippi experienced their most challenging August on record. By September, more than a third of the United States was facing drought conditions, and in October, water levels in the lower Mississippi dropped to historic lows. Barge companies had to reduce shipment weights because the river wasn't deep enough, leading to a 77% increase in shipping costs. In the 1980s, the channel was deepened from 35 feet to 45 feet, and this caused some issues. The Mississippi River bed sits below sea level. Any time the flow drops below a certain volume, salt water enters from the mouth of the river and travels upstream. When the river was deepened, this problem was aggravated. From 1988 to 1990, salt water intruded more than 100 miles up the river, making all of this water salty. This water is intended for land irrigation and for drinking water. The corrosive salt water damages pipes and distribution systems, this was a nightmare for the region. Despite this, in 2022, the river was further deepened to 50 feet. One of the reasons for this is because a deeper river enhances access to the port of New Orleans, one of the nation's busiest and most vital ports. This confirms that a deeper river brings both significant benefits and drawbacks. Today, the Mississippi and its tributaries face an array of challenges, with the dynamic natural system altered significantly from what it was centuries ago. Approximately 80% of the natural floodplains have been converted into farmland and villages. Now communities are taking steps to restore some of the original floodplains, allowing more space for the river, but experts warn that it might be too late to reverse the damage caused. The Mississippi River, as it's been for thousands of years, is dying. It's being turned into something less stable and predictable. However, its inherent nature cannot be subdued. The river naturally wants to flood and dry, responding to changing weather patterns that are expected to become more extreme. With tens of millions of people now living along its shores, they have the choice to either view the river as a foe or a friend. What are your thoughts on the decline of the Mississippi River? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.